reporting here from Government 2.0 Expo here in Washington, D.C. I'm O'Reilly Media's Washington correspondent. With me today, I have Shauna Pandia, the Chief Medical Officer and Co-Founder of Civigard. Yeah. Um, so one of the challenges that we've seen in the world today is that uh, disasters have come thick and fast, and there needs to be more effective uh, communication between citizens and government. Um, what are some of the uh, challenges that Civigard is rising to meet? Um, that's actually a great question because you look at um, the disasters, the incidents of them in the world today, they're just increasing. And you look at also the need for security. So since 9-11, we've really seen this need to be able to better connect with the public um, and do it in a way that's not just the, the run-of-the-mill target message to the entire population. You really need to be able to do it in a way that's location-specific. Because currently, we have systems that can mass message the population, but they send out blanket messages. So when you're able to actually target message your civilians, that gives them not just awareness, but actionable items. And so that gives them not only um, th this awareness, but it gives them a level of confidence that, you know, they can actually, there's someone guiding them, there's trusted information coming at them. They can actually come out of this crisis okay. So really the needs come down to being location specific, um, fast. There's mass messaging systems um, often end up being so slow because we're targeting, pushing out so many messages at, as at one time. So being location specific, being fast, being near real time are really some key drivers in this space. So one of the things that came out of the uh, tragic Virginia Tech shootings was the uh, need for the university to be able to reach out to its student population quickly and to reach them on the go. Um, what are some of the technologies that are allowing that sort of targeting, as you say, to happen? So there's a couple of them. Um, being able to be location specific and being able to do it quickly resolve, requires pulling in multiple platforms. You can't just require, rely on SMS, you can't just require, uh, rely on email, you can't just require, rely on web. You have to actually be able to operate cross-platform um, and you also have to uh, realize that not everyone's going to be using the same product, not everyone's going to be relying on iPhone, not everyone's going to be relying on Android. Um, so it really um, it caters. To, it, it requires uh, one to cater um, to multiple pl platforms, um, multiple uh, hardwares, multiple smartphone systems. You really need to be open to every single system out there, and not just rely um, on one single system. So that means that you're building on open standards, open protocols. Does that mean things like uh, HTML5 as opposed to definitely. something else? Yes. Okay. So HTML5 is definitely a one trend we embrace um, at CivicGuard. Um, that's actually what enabled us to go on iPhone, Android, BlackBerry. Um, and we're actually definitely leveraging a lot of other open, st uh, open standards. Uh, open Street Maps is one of them. Um, and those actually offer another advantage um, in terms of resiliency. Because one thing that you really need to recognize in a crisis is that technology will fail, networks will go down. You need to be resilient in that format as well. Um, so, for example, on, on the map side, we rely on Google Maps, Yahoo, Bing, OpenStreetMaps. Um, when it comes to servers, we look at Amazon, we look at Rackspace, we look at Nebula. So you really you can't be married to one single entity because um, when you rely on multiple channels, it will actually allow you to be more resilient at the day's end. So the uh, service that CivicGuard provides is uh, emergency communications between governments and citizens uh, during a crisis? Yeah, we like to think of it as emergency communications 2.0 just because we, we take the existing mass messaging um, concept well, we really, we really looked at these drivers that we were just talking about, um, the need to give citizens actionable, um, aware, awareness-heightened information. Because when you're in a crisis zone, just take the Times Square incident a couple weeks ago. What really would have helped in that situation, should the need to evacuate um, en masse very quickly, would have been um, instructions that say, hey, user, we see you're in the Times Square area. There's been an incident. Don't worry. Based on your location, here's an exit point. Here are your steps, step, here are your evacuation routes, step by step. So um, being able to do it in a way that's very targeted, um, very quick, very resilient to network failure, um, and faster than any, any other um, system out there is really an advantage in a situation like this because on the civilian side, it, um, it guides them to safety. Your smartphone can actually save your life in a crisis. Um, and on the emergency side, you're able to manage your entire scenario much better. So one of the first places that CivicGuard is being deployed, in fact, it may be the first place, is uh, Maynard, Texas, yeah. which is a technology-forward-thinking uh, part of the world. 
Um, how are they going to be using it? So we've actually just announced on Tuesday that Maynard is our first partner. Um, they have 6,500 citizens, so we're really excited about that. So actually over the next month, we're rolling out um, a trial of our, of our system. So we're actually just going to be saying everyone with a smartphone, um, sign up to CiviGuard.me. Um, and then on the back end, we'll be integrating with their office of emergency management and their existing systems um, to be able to run drills, to be able to say if there's an extreme weather scenario like a thunderstorm, um, you know, here's what you need to know, here's what you need to be aware of, um, and basically offer them a heightened, um, but more specific way to generate um, their emergency management instructions. And now just to be clear, the, this is something the city invests in but uh, is freely available to citizens? That's exactly it. So for exa it, it, it's, an, it's an important part of government that um, to be able to protect civilians, which is why the government is the one who fronts the cost and then civilians um, in any municipality download the app for free or access the web, web Although, app. Uh, ultimately, someone might point out if you're paying taxes, you probably uh, pay for it that way <laughs> exactly. too. Exactly. Yeah, it so does come around. It's an indirect, yeah. Yeah, As a you. DC resident, I know that when I pay taxes, I uh, ultimately am funding some of the things that our CTO, Brian Sivak, is talking about doing. So it's of interest to me to see where he's finding cost efficiencies or better ways to deliver services. Yeah, and um, that's a great point because this is actually a very direct way it comes back to not only touch your life directly as a civilian, but not also save your life when the need of a, when a crisis comes around and the need arises. So uh, what's the next step in terms of building out the platform? So the next step is, there, there's several of them, um, so we just, uh, we, in addition to the Mainer Texas announcement, we also announced our 10 cities in 2010 um, pilot program, um, so we've actually been receiving a lot of interest from that, which is really encouraging to us. So just branching out, scaling to more cities, um, really pushing our system to the limits. Um, and then also building out to multiple platforms, so we're on Android and iPhone right now. Mm -hmm. By the year's end, we will be on BlackBerry. Um, and just reaching as many civilians as we can, to be okay. honest. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for stopping by and talking to us. Thank you. It's my absolute pleasure. Okay, so that was uh, Shauna Pandya, Chief Medical Officer and Co-Founder of Civigard. Uh, it's Alex Howard, Washington Correspondent for Raleigh Media, signing off.